Thomas Jefferson really was the was the author of the Declaration of Independence. Okay, he was the one. He was the architect. He's the one who put it together. Okay, so people love to cry Thomas Jefferson, especially liberals. You listening to me? They love to cry Thomas Jefferson, talk about Thomas Jefferson. As a matter of fact, they painted this man to be somebody he was not. He said something in the second message last week, a whole message dedicated to the separation of church and state last week. That's what you hear these days. You hear separation of church and state. People ask us often, how can we meet in a public high school? Separation of what? How do you do it? Well, because the separation of church and state, it's not in the Constitution. It's not in the Declaration of Independence. It's nowhere except one letter written by Thomas Jefferson to a group of Baptists in Danbury where he was basically telling them, you don't have to worry about the government coming on you and persecuting you because there's a wall of separation of church and state. My job isn't to, to lord over you guys or to stop what you're doing or anything like that. My job is to... to, to to, to enact the laws that Congress passes. You don't ever have to worry about me. Did you hear me? In 1947, a guy for the really for the really liberal Supreme Court in the 40s, a guy named Hugo Black, went back and wrote the majority opinion for the court, and he quoted a guy named Thomas Jefferson about the wall of separation church and state. He pulled this from just a letter Jefferson was writing, just really a thank you letter and just encouraging these people. And since that time, it's been a downhill slide. Y'all listening to me, yes or no? Been a downhill slide. So this church needs to know, separation church and state is not in the Constitution. Amen? Thomas Jefferson never believed that the church and government shouldn't work together. We wouldn't have a country if it wasn't for God-fearing Christians. Do you understand that? There would be no country. It's crazy, guys. So anyway, so that's why we do something called In God We Trust. This is our sixth year doing these messages in the summer. And uh, just for a couple of weeks, just to help us know where we came from. Amen? And to tell the truth. It, telling the truth a good thing say. Can't we tell the truth? Well, I've got to believe some kind of twisted mess. Let's find out what the truth is. Today, let's go with this man right here. The title of my message this morning is Thomas Jefferson's Thoughts on the Teachings of Jesus Christ. Let's go back to history. I should be able, if he believed anything about Jesus, I should be able to find it in history books. Amen? That's what we've done. Let's look at it today. Everything's documented. You can go online. You can pull it down. You can look it up yourself if you want to and check us out. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson third president of the United States of America, the architect of the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson. He's been labeled, say it with me, what? Anti-God. You will hear that of, out of all our founders. You will hear more about Jefferson not being a God-fearing man and a believer in God than any of the others. Okay? Man, why? Because, man, if you can go to the guy who's the architect of the Declaration of Independence, and you can pull something maybe from a letter where he wrote, you know, I mean, you got, you got, you got a dog that'll hunt right there. And that's what they've done. Okay? So he's been labeled anti-God. He's been labeled as well as a what? A what? This is the number one thing about Jefferson. He's a deist. He's a deist. He's a deist. If you keep saying something long enough, people will believe it. Especially people that don't want to read. Okay? People just won't be led by the nose. Can't do. Okay, thank you. Where's my check? Excuse me. Okay? Excuse me. I know that's ugly, guys. Why not check things out? You can do that. And that's what I want us to be. Okay? Been labeled anti-God. It's a crying shame that a man like him has been labeled anti-God. And so much of our freedoms today is because of a man like this. It's a disgrace and a shame. And saying he's a deist. What's a deist? That's believing there's a God, but that he has no control over anything. Isn't that nice to have one of those say, I believe in God, but he can't do anything and doesn't do anything. What? That's what he's been labeled. Let's check out the facts. What's the truth? Did Thomas Jefferson say it with me? 
Did he trust in God? Okay? Thomas Jefferson wasn't a preacher. Okay? He doesn't need to be. Okay? God has all gifted us in different ways. But can we find out what he believed? Was God an influence in his life? Did he acknowledge it in any of his writings? He was a writer, man. This guy wrote stuff. Okay? So if he was a writer, we should be able to find out what he really believed. Let's look at it. Was he a deist? Let's, let's handle that one first. Did he believe that there's God, but, you know, but he doesn't do anything, not control anything? Was he a deist? No. Say that with me. Was he a what? A deist. Say it with me. No. He was never affiliated with any deist movement. My gosh. But he's a deist. Keep looking. He was with a doubt, without a doubt a what? He had a Protestant Christian. He was a mainline, during the day, Christian. Now things have changed in denominations since way back when. But back in the day, a lot of these mainline names of denominations, they were shooting straight arrows. They were solid. Okay? He was a, he was a Protestant. He was raised Episcopalian. That's how he was raised. Secondly, when in Philadelphia, say this with me, he attended what church? One more time, he attended what church? Christ church. You know who else attended Christ church? George Washington. But George, I mean, really, people, people pretty much accept this man was a believer. But not Jefferson. Isn't it funny how one can go there and the other one can? Well, he ain't. How'd that work? Say, you know who else went to... You know, also went to this Christ church, Betsy Ross. Betsy Ross. But they can't have none of that church and state. Can't. We wouldn't have no flag. We wouldn't have no first president of the United States. I guess it's okay, ain't it, church? Yes or no? Say. It's okay when we get grown now, over 200 years old as a nation, we get arrogant. And we don't think we need God anymore. You hear me? And we can rewrite history. God help us when we do that, I'm telling you. Amen. You're listening. When in Williamsburg, he attended Bruton Parish Episcopalian Church, also as did somebody else. Who? It's almost like, where'd George go to church? I believe that's where I'm going. Not a bad thing, is it, church? Say you want a full message on George Washington, we have that out there today for you. In his private library, Jefferson's private library, you can tell a little bit about a man by his library. He had a four-volume set of the Bible. Here's the key. And it was well what? It was well what? It was well what? But no, 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 Jefferson don't read the Bible, believe the Bible or nothing. He just goes to the pages and just plays with it. This is goofy. It also held what kind of spot in his library? A what? A preeminent spot in his library. Now, this is according to history. I wasn't there. But according to history, and that's what you do with books that you read. Amen? Come on. So what was his thoughts, though, and on the teachings of Jesus Christ. We want to hone in on that. Now, you'll be surprised. He and I have a lot of similar views, and it might surprise you. Here they are. First of all, what was his thoughts on Jesus? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Say it with me. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. What was Jefferson's thoughts on Jesus? That ought to answer some questions that we might have about Jefferson. How many of you are bored to tears? You came to church, I'm talking history. You thought you were out of school. Yeah, because you missed it. Here we go. His thoughts on the teachings of Jesus. We've got to go back to his writings. On March 31, 1801, by the way, that's the same year he wrote that letter about wall of separation, church and state. He wrote that on January 1, 1802. I'm sorry, 1802. That's right, 1802. So a little bit earlier before that letter. 
Here he is, though, in that same time frame. You can get an idea of his mind. On March 23rd, by the way, that's Kim's birthday. Last week I had something on the screen. It was my birthday. You know, it was funny. It was funny. Here it is. March 23rd, 1801, Thomas Jefferson wrote from Washington, D.C. to Moses Robinson. The Christian religion, when divested of the rags in which the clergy have enveloped it and brought to the original purity and simplicity of its benevolent institutor is a religion of all others most friendly to what? Liberty, science, and the freest expression of the human mind. Okay? Now, be honest with you. He had a little problem with some clergy. Guess who else does? I was watching Christian TV the other night. Main speakers across America, and every one of them, four in a row, preaching false doctrine that does not line up in the Bible, and you won't find it. You can twist it and make it say, but it ain't true. Not saying that happens all the time. That was just me with the remote going, oh my God, where's that? Where'd that come from? Wow. Well, he had a problem with clergy not teaching the truth and taking advantage and things like that. We should too. Amen? Yes or no? Sure. And guess what? I got a problem with you taking advantage of anybody. In your business, if you're crooked, I hope you fail. Did you hear me? Yes or no? I hope you do not succeed. I want you to be honest. I want you to give glory to God for the good things that comes from your works. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen? It's no different. That's how he felt. His thoughts on the teachings of Christ. April 21, 1803, Jefferson wrote to Dr. Benjamin Rush, who was also signed the Declaration of Independence. Hang in here with me. My views, Jefferson writing, are the result of a life of inquiry and reflection and very different from the anti-Christian system imputed to me by those who know nothing of my opinion. To the corruptions of Christianity, I am indeed opposed. But not to the genuine precepts of Jesus himself. I am a Christian in the only sense in which he wished anyone to be. Sincerely attached to his doctrines in preference to all others. Can we praise the Lord for that? Boy, that'd be good for all of us. Wow! So they were questioning him in his own day. Because I mean freedom and freedom of religion and freedom of expression. and These were things that a lot of people didn't want, especially at that time. The British. I mean, that signing of that Declaration of Independence, that did not come with like, wow, thank you, we really like that. It came with, we're not going to let you go. We're not going to let you be your own nation. We'll kill you. And that's what happened, started happening. It was just continuing on. War of 1812. You know, Washington was burned. <laughs> the British almost really took over America. We, 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 really, we hung on right there at uh, probably at Fort McHenry, the battle in, at Baltimore. So there were people questioning him and questioning others and coming after these guys. Amen? Y'all listening to I lose you. What's his thoughts on Jesus? On June 17th, 1804, so you see one letter right after the other. One document all right, right coming to you. In a letter to Henry Fry, Jefferson writes, I consider the doctrines of Jesus as delivered by himself to contain the outlines of the sublimest system of morality that's ever been taught. But I hold in the most profound detestation and execration, those are big old nasty words, the corruptions of it which have been invented. Can you imagine Jefferson today taking my remote and looking at the TV? At Christian TV, can you imagine what he'd be doing? Woo! I agree with him. Do you? Absolutely, guys. 
On November 4th, 1820, Jefferson wrote to Jared Sparks. What's the point? We're just giving you excerpts of different things he wrote to different people. And you can see his heart. I hold the precepts of Jesus as delivered by himself to be the most pure, benevolent, and sublime which have ever been preached to man. Ever been what? Preached to who? That's pretty high priority gives that, isn't it? Say. In a letter to Charles Thompson, maybe 10, 15 years later to 1816, he wrote regarding his personal book. What? Jefferson had a personal book? Yeah. The personal book that Jefferson wrote was called The Life and Morals of Jesus of Nazareth. How many in here have wrote a book on Jesus specifically? Can I see your hand? You wrote a book on Jesus specifically. You have a book, and we can go find it, on Jesus specifically. Now, we do have an author in the, in the room. He's wrote lots of books about Jesus and prophecy. But, Doctor, have you ever honed in on a book just on Jesus? Jefferson did. He was big on Jesus. How many think we ought to be big on Jesus? How many do you think that? Say. Say. Yeah. Now, whether you agree with it or not, that's beside the point. But he wrote a book on the life and morals of Jesus. He said, of all the systems of morality, ancient or modern, which come under my investigation, none appear to me so pure as that of who? Jesus. But no, I'm a deist. I don't know, you know, I'm anti-God. Separate church and state. It doesn't even fit, guys. Come on. The doctrines, now watch this. The doctrines which flowed from the lips of Jesus himself are within the comprehension of a who? Of a child. But thousands of volumes have not yet explained the Platonisms, big old fancy word, engrafted on them. He was saying, what you have in your scriptures is so clear to even a little child. But as you discover and explore, there's thousands and thousands of volumes that could be written on the words of Jesus. And you know what? Since he said that, they have been. <laughs> Millions of things have been written on Jesus. Isn't that incredible? This is what he believed. Are y'all listening today? I think it's important you know where you come from. We celebrate the fourth. We blow the fireworks. It's the Declaration of Independence. Well, shouldn't we know something? about the architect of that great document, especially when he's been lied about and the things have been twisted. I think it's a good thing to do. Had the doctrines of Jesus been preached always as pure as they came from his lips, the whole civilized world would have been Christians. That's a good line. You know a lot of people, they don't have a problem with Jesus. They have a problem with us. Isn't that true? Say. I don't hear people say, oh, I don't like that Jesus. Jesus is just, you know, I don't like that Jesus. Anything they know about Jesus, they know from us. Jesus said to his disciples, they shall know that you're my disciples if you love one another. But we try to come up with everything but love to reach our world. This new thing and this latest thing. Did you hear about that church got this new thing and this new thing and they got this thing and this thing and this thing. Oh yeah, God's, God's. Did you know what will win our community? Love. Did you hear me? Yes or no? Love. Not judging them. Not, not, not lying to them. Okay, let me tell you something else. I'm going to be ugly here. If you're a gossip, let me tell you something. You do such harm to the gospel of Christ with your big mouth. Quote me. Put me right there. It's the most unloving thing you can do is ever talk about another believer. Yeah, but it's the truth. Yeah, but you've got a big mouth. Excuse me. Come on. Are you listening? Yes or no? If you don't like it, find another church. We'll grow it without you. You, you, you listening to me? Yes or no? Love never fails. That's what Jefferson was saying. Come on. I like Jefferson. Amen.
I know that's ugly preaching, but we're going to lay it out, guys. Come on. And this is for me too. This is for me too, man. Gary, what do you say? And how do you love? And how do you talk? And, and I, man, I, I, I fail at that. But when I do, I'm, I'm terrible. Shouldn't happen. You listening? All right, come on. I've always said, Jefferson, I've always said and I will say that the studious perusal of the sacred volume will make better citizens, say it with me, better and better. Sounds like a preacher to me. What was his thoughts on the teachings of Jesus? That's what we've been looking at, church. A little more time here. In 1816, Jefferson wrote in his own handwriting a book for his personal study. It was his personal study entitled The Life and Morals of Jesus of Nazareth. I alluded to it earlier. In 1904, now this is over almost 100 years later, the 57th Congress, in an effort to restrain unethical behavior, I don't know if that was for Congress or the country, Listen, I'm serious. They voted, watch. They voted that there be printed and bound by photolithographic process with an introduction of not to exceed 25 pages. We don't want a lot of intro on this thing. To be prepared by Cyrus Adler, librarian of the Smithsonian Institution, for the use of who? Congress. No separation church and state. When wait, keep watching. Nine thousand copies of Thomas Jefferson's Morals of Jesus. This is all in a, in, a, in a something from Congress. As the same appears in the National Museum, three thousand copies for the use of the who? Senate. Now are there three thousand members in the Senate. Uh uh-uh. uh. They, they give them a lot. They need a lot. <laughs> Give them a lot. They can put it everywhere. Put it, put it everywhere. Put it on the buggy. Put it in the room. Put it in the bathroom. Put it everywhere. <laughs> and 6,000 copies for the use of the who? House. That's funny right there. Two years before Jefferson's death, some more writings. He wrote James Madison about the writing of the Declaration of Independence. He's the architect of it. You're free because of it. Amen? I know that I turn to neither book nor pamphlet while writing it. I did not consider it as any part of my charge to invent new ideas altogether and to offer no sentiments which had never been expressed before. I pray before God that these principles may be eternal. And close the prayer with my wishes for yourself of long life, health, and happiness. So did Thomas Jefferson believe in God? Did he believe in Jesus? Did he talk about Jesus? My goodness, he he took a lot of his time and wrote a whole book on Jesus for for his own sake. I think we'd do well to do that. Get you a notepad and read the New Testament and start taking you some notes how God has spoke to you and it's for you. Amen? ain't about becoming famous. It's for you. Would that be a good thing? Say, sure. That's what he did. Jefferson died on what day? Isn't that amazing? He died on July 4th, exactly 50 years from signing the Declaration of Independence. 50 years. There's no doubt, no one can say that God didn't use this man, God didn't have his hand on this man, and that, uh, that this man did not seek God for help. He did. Was he perfect? No. Are you? No. Am I? No. Aren't you glad he still uses us? Say, praise the Lord. Thomas Jefferson's last words usually find out a little bit by somebody when their last words out of their mouth 
I resign myself to my what? And my child to my country. What a great line that is. Take care of my, take care of my child, America. Now, he is a writer, all right. He wrote his own epitaph for his tombstone. I recommend you do the same thing. Amen. Come on. My mama did. She didn't know it, but on my mama's tombstone in Rockingham, North Carolina, we put it on the screen before, Mama. And we know all things work together for good to them who love God because that's what she would always tell me. So she wrote her own. Amen. Jefferson wrote his own with his pen. Here was buried Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of American Independence, of the Statute of Virginia for religious what? 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 You're writing that on your own tombstone about religious freedom? What about church and state and separation and king and all that? It's right on his tombstone. And of the statute of Virginia for religious freedom and father of the University of Virginia. That's what he wanted on his tombstone. I just think it's interesting. On his tombstone, he put something about freedom of religion. Interesting. The Jefferson Memorial stands on the south banks of the Washington, D.C. basin and has been inscribed in Jefferson's own words. Here they are. Almighty God, what? Hath created the mind free. All attempts to influence it by temporal punishments or burdens are a departure from the plan of the holy author of our religion. How do they get by with this? Say, it's because we don't care. Must be true, that's what they say. They're smarter than me, right? You. It's bull. Did y'all hear me today? I know it's a little ugly this morning. Y'all got up this morning and just turned into, got into ugly. You ran into ugly today. <laughs> His thoughts on the teachings of Jesus. That's what we talked about this morning. Can you say these four words with us? In God we trust. Praise the Lord this morning for just a time different, but a time today. It's important for us.